Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Shafiq, and I would like to welcome all of you in this video session. Today, we'll be talking about rapid drawdown analysis. You already know that we have like three types of analysis, that end of construction or short-term analysis, uh, long-term or steady estate seepage analysis, and rapid drawdown analysis. We also have like earthquake analysis if we uh, have like uh, a potential uh, for earthquake in that particular area where you are going to uh, construct your uh, slope, okay? Now we can just um, move forward. Uh, you can see that um, Uh, rapid drawdown is basically is caused by lowering the water table adjacent to a slope at a rate so fast that the soil doesn't have sufficient time to drain significantly. Okay, so if you need to, you know, drop the water level because sometimes you want to save the uh, dam or a magment, you know, like so that they don't, you know, like uh, fall down or something. So you can just, you know, spill away all the water and the water level will fall so rapidly that the soil above that one cannot be drained at that time. So we can see undrained shear strength are asked to apply for all but the, um, courses free draining materials. If you have your K, hydraulic conductivity of that soil is 10 to the power minus three centimeter per second, then basically you will just think like it's drain strength. If it is less than that, then basically we usually consider that one undrained situation. If drawdown occurs during or immediately after construction, the undrained shear strength used in drawdown analysis in the same as that applies to the end of construction condition. If drawdown occurs after establishing steady seepage condition, the undrained shear strength used in drawdown analysis in different, is different than that applies to the end of construction uh, condition. I'll just discuss that one, you know, like, in the later part of that thing that what usually this one means. Now, the stability at the end of drawdown is usually analyzed in two different ways. First of all, effective stress method, and then total stress method in which undrained shear strength of low permeability soil are related to the effective consolidation pressure prior to drawdown which means like you can see at the beginning, the maximum pool is here, elevation 103 and the water here. So you can see because of that pool is here for a longer period of time. So this one will cause a steady estate seepage through the embankment here, okay? Now, as soon as I move that one from here to here, then you understand that the soil here um, will be undrained situation because the water level is here, but the soil couldn't drain from this soil mass above this water level right now, okay? So we are just gonna, show an example that how we can do the, uh, the rapid drawdown analysis. So basically there is two different methods, like not there are several methods, but usually most common method, you know, like to do the uh, rapid drawdown method is usually followed by Bishop method, simplified Bishop method or, uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers method, okay? But in that particular example, I'm gonna show you using the simplified Bishop method because simplified Bishop method is much more accurate 
compared to the other method, okay? So you can see what they are trying to show you that you have a slope here. Here is three to one up to elevation 74 and then from 74 to 110. This one is 2.5 is to one. The unit weight of soil is 135 pound per cubic feet. And water level is gonna fall from elevation 103 to elevation 23. And this one will um, fall very quickly so that the soil here didn't get chance to drain before, you know, like you move that one from here to here. So undrained shear condition will occur here. Now you can see that these are the parameters given. This is for effective stress analysis. And this is your R envelope from which actually will develop this envelope, you know, like to um, solve the uh, method. Now, how we get this, all this stuff, you can see this one is directly from the CD test. This one is a little bit different. Uh, usually comes from CU or consolidated undrained test. And then from that one, actually, we can just develop this one theoretically, okay? Now let's move forward and see that how we can do that one. So there are several stage of calculation to find out, you know, like how this um, uh, factor of safety will be changing when this one is here, then when this one is here. Um, and finally, we also uh, might need another like third stage solution. This is the first stage, this is the second stage, and maybe third stage, which I'll discuss later on. Now you can see this is actually your uh, given slip circle, you know, like here. And for this particular one, you can see there is like seven, uh, sorry, 12 slices here. So, um, we'll just use that one for that. Now, one of the other thing is given that like the water level here, when the, the, then the pore water pressure is kind of horizontal here. At the same time, when this water level fall from here to here, then basically your pore water pressure would be along that line here. This is just for simplified in like kind of like assumption so that our calculation is a little less, but in practical case, actually you have to measure or you have to run the seep analysis to see that how this uh, pore water pressure will change during the time when this one is gonna move from here to here, okay? So you have to run SIP first, that what would be the, you know, like the distribution of pore water pressure here. And then you just change that uh, water level from here to here in a certain period of time. And then you can see like how your, you know, like pore water pressure will change at a different time uh, in all those, you know, like slices here, okay? Now I'm saying, I already said that one, that like we are gonna use like simplified Bishop method for this analysis. You can use other methods too, like uh, the force equilibrium methods. But here we are using Bishop methods because Bishop method is kind of more accurate, okay? Now you can see here that uh, this is all my, you know, like this is like first stage computation, it means like when the water table is here, okay? Water table is here and the pore water pressure is along that line here, okay? Now from the AutoCAD drawing, or you can just use like a scale here, but AutoCAD would be much easier to do because this is much more uh, accurate. And you can see you already did this type of analysis for um, steady state seepage, 
So you already know how to do that one. There is no difference, you know, like for the first stage competition. Okay, so this one is here. You can see this is your slice number. This is horizontal width. This is the average height. And this is the area. You already know that these are, you can already measure, you, all, you can measure the, these parameters directly from your drawing. So basically here you can see all those green thing is, you can just measure that one uh, from, our, from your drawing, okay? The black one basically is calculated values, okay? So this is your base inclination, which is here, and then W sine alpha, and this is the summation of the, the W sine alpha, and then height of surface water. From surface water height, you can just find out the pressure. And this is surface inclination at the top of the slice here. Okay. So from there, you multiply with this distance from here to here with the pressure. So you get the surface load here. Okay. And then you just try to find out the horizontal moment arm and vertical moment arm. So this is if the force is working here, then force is P. And if you take the components of that force in vertical and horizontal direction, that would be uh, P cosine beta and P cosine, uh, P sine beta respectively. And beta is the angle of that top surface with the horizontal. Okay, so once you get that force here, you have to multiply that one with the distance from here to here. And this one is trying to rotate that one uh, kind of like at the, at, at the direction of the driving moment for failure. So this is kind of negative. On the other hand, this one is positive because this one is along the, um, this, uh, along the direction for resisting moment. Okay, so that's why we put all these values here. Like you can see for five to actually nine, this one is negative. And then for 10 to 12, this one is positive because these 10, 11, and 12 here, this one, you will see that this one is gonna go like this and this one is gonna go like this. So the vertical moment will actually try to rotate counterclockwise because this one is left side of the center, okay? So rather than using, you know, like uh, uh, that number here, actually, if you go right side of that one, I, we use that one negative. If we go this side, then we use that one positive because that's the way they will create the moment there, okay? So here is actually the total moment you can calculate from here. This is piezometer height. And as we said earlier, that this height is basically from the bottom, middle part of the uh, bottom of the slide to this height here. Bottom part is from here to the height here, okay? So that's basically your moment here. And that this is your piezometric height. Once you get the piezometric height, you can just calculate your pore water pressure, uh, which is nothing but gamma HP, gamma WHP. And this is the cohesion and friction. The first one, actually, we use that one, like uh, use this effective stress you know, like analysis, because we know the pore water pressure, first of all, and this one in, at, the, at that level, you know, like for a long period of, period of time. So we just assume that like the, a steady state situation occur, okay? So we just calculate this one because we know that this one divided by this one would be our you know, like this part here, because we are trying to find out our factor of safety is this divided by this, okay? So that's what we are doing here. 
And once we get that one, this is our assumed factor of safety. And this is our calculated factor of safety. Calculated factor of safety is like this one divided by M alpha divided by W sine alpha. So basically these divided by this divided by this, okay? Because this one is already divided by M alpha here. So we divide that one here and we get that uh, factor of safety, calculated factor of safety here. Now, I already posted also the uh, Excel file, you know, like in your Blackboard. So take a look there that how we do this one, okay? So once you get that one, then basically several iteration, you try to see that how, when your assume factor of safety would be equal to your calculated factor of safety, okay? So we get like 2.27 um, when this water is here, okay? Now, actually I also, you already know this one, okay? Just follow the same procedure, like what you did like your um, problem um, or, the homework problem you already did following uh, Bishop's simplified Bishop's method for steady state seepage. So this is exactly the same thing here, okay? Now, the second stage is like this one is gonna move from here to here, somewhere here. I didn't show that one here, the second stage, this is the first stage is showing here. The second stage is gonna move something here. And we don't know because here we know that what is, you know, like our uh, effective stress parameters here. But here, when this one is gonna move from here to here, then this soil here will be undrained condition. So, the important thing is like when the water is here, actually the pressure that's coming from that water to each of that slides will cause a consolidation because this one is there for a long period of, period of time, right? But at the same time, this one will occur consolidation, but you can see that that consolidation occur not from the force vertically working here. This force is a little bit angled here, right? So we see that um, because of this consolidation as well as the force is little, you know, like angled here, this one has important or very significant consequence on our calculation and the strength of the soil here. So let's move forward. So these are the step, first stage competition, kind of like a step-by-step -step procedure for each of the column, like here. I just talked about that, okay? So you know this one. So I'm just gonna move a little fast here because you already know these steps. Now, uh, let's say here, the second stage competition, that when the water is gonna move from here to here, okay? But in the second stage, when the water level falls much faster than the required time for draining water from the soil above this blue area, it is assumed that the soil is in undrained condition. Okay, so it still didn't, you know, like trying to drain here, but still didn't. So basically we are assuming that the soil here is undrained condition. So our, you know, slip surface is some, somewhere like that. So we have to use the undrained condition, undrained shear strength of the soil for this particular situation. 
The pressure from the water at max pool causes the soil to consolidate it for a while, which often offer higher strength. So before this water level here, let's say at the beginning, the water level was here. For example, you know, like for, you know, like it's not actually the case, but I'm just trying to say that one, to explain that one. So that time actually you took the, you know, like the soil strength here. Now you move that water table from here to here. So water level is here means like this one will create a lot of pressure in that soil. And this, that's because of that thing, the soil will try to consolidate it, okay? So when the soil consolidated, basically the strength goes up, okay? So we are not only taking the undrained shear condition, but we are also considering two different things. First of all, the effect of consolidation. And second thing, that consolidation is not like uh, from the vertical side or not like isotropic. So because of the anisotropy of the consolidation, we also have to consider that one, okay? The soil mass above the minimum pool was consolidated for a while and subjected to shear in undrained condition, which mimics the CU test, okay? So you can see basically we have three tests here, right? CD test, drain is allowed during, you know, like consolidation. And when you apply shear, that time is drainage is also allowed. So basically, during the consolidation or applying like confining pressure, this one is consolidated. Since the drain is allowed, so when you are going to apply that vertical load or shear, you know, like shearing, which we call like shearing, that time also the soil will be consolidated because the drain is open and uh, because of the load, some of the water will try to escape from there. And you know for CD test, all the time your pore water pressure has to be zero. This means like this one has to be consolidated and both stages here and here, actually the consolidation occurs, okay? For CU test, you can see the drainage is allowed only when you apply the confining pressure, okay? So this one is actually consolidating. For this stage, you don't allow the water to drain out from there. So this one cannot consolidate it when you are applying the shear, okay? On the other hand, if you see that EU test, basically there is no consolidation here because all the time your drainage is not allowed. But if you think about this condition here, that when the soil was, uh, when the water was here, then basically the water here is, uh, the soil here was consolidating, okay? Now, this one is here and the uh, water cannot get out from there that fast. So basically no consolidation, it's just like the undrained situation. So if you consider that thing here, then basically this one mimics like your CU test when the water at high level, then drainage allowed and the consolidation is occurring. And the second stage, like when you are applying that shear, that time actually drain is not allowed. Drain is actually allowed, but the drainage is so small compared to the, the fast moving of the water table, you know, like that would create a undrained situation, okay? So that's why usually we get that strength when we are talking about here is estimated from a modified CU envelope, which is called like R envelope, okay? Now, how do you make that R envelope? Let's say 
the black circle is you you got that one from your uh, CU test, okay? And this is your envelope here. So this is your C prime and this is your phi prime. Now we know that the soil is kind of consolidated at C three here. So what we do, we just move that point from here to this consolidation pressure, okay? And then draw the same circle, same diameter, like which is sigma one F minus sigma three F prime, okay? The same size, you know, like circle here, okay? And then I draw that line here. That's the, we call that one R envelope, okay? So this angle is phi r, and this intercept here is c r. Actually, in our particular problem, this c r and phi r is already given, so we don't have to draw like these circles there anymore. Okay. Now, once you get that one, then basically you can show that one like such a way like this one is your sigma 3c and this is your tau ff so you can just draw that one here so this is your intercept and this is your angle here now how can you find out this one there is a relationship like d is equal to cr and this cosine phi r cosine phi prime divide, divided by one minus sine phi r. Similarly, you can also find out that angle from this equation, okay? So basically this one is one of the, one of the, you know, like uh, uh, kind of envelope that you have to use. Now, this second part is kind of like very, very important, you know, like that, when you are using like your CU test, the first stage actually you are trying, to, the first stage is only consolidation occurring, right? During that time, the, uh, let me, this is like KC equal to one envelope is de developed from the R envelope, that's what we, talked about, but why we are saying that one Kc equal to one. So that's basically the effect of consolidation. That Kc equal to one, that's coming from actually from isotropic or an isotropic, you know, like consolidation thing. So shear strength is a function of principal stress ratio during the consolidation, okay? So if you see here, that at the beginning when we are just applying the pore water, uh, applying the um, confining stress, uh, that time for the CU test, actually this one is uh, consolidating, okay? When we are applying that deviator stress, that time the valve is closed and uh, there is no consolidation. So you can see if you just consider the consolidation part, then during that time, actually your sigma one divided by sigma three, that's equal to one, okay? Sigma one divided by sigma three equal to one because your deviated stress is not still applied during the consolidation for CU test, okay? So that time actually the principal stress ratio Kc sigma one by sigma three is equal to one. On the other hand, for CD test, what you see there? That your consolidation occurs both, you know, like when you apply the confining pressure as well as when you apply the shear force. So the whole time is the sample is consolidated. So what is the um, 
principal stress ratio means like sigma one F divided by sigma three F. That's basically your KF, okay? So you think about the same thing here for CD test, where the valve is open all the time, means like during the confining, uh, pressure is applied and when the shear force is applied all the time, the, the uh, valve is open, so they are just draining all the time, means like the consolidation is occurring all the time. Now you can see when you start like applying that deviator stress, so your sigma one is basically increasing and your sigma three remain same, right? So sigma one is increasing, 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 and then it fails. So when it fails, then this is like sigma one max divided by sigma three, sorry, this one here, sigma one by sigma three, that's the maximum possible, you know, like principal stress ratio Kc, okay? We call that one Kf means like K final, okay? That's coming from there. So maximum principal stress ratio, we get that one from our CD test, okay? And your Kc means like principal stress ratio equal to one, that's actually your CU test, okay? So Kc at field is calculated because our, you know, like anisotropic, you know, like the sigma one by sigma three is a little different here. So wherever you are applying that load, one part is going as sigma one, the other part is going like at sigma three. So we can just calculate that Kc at the field and then try to estimate the actual, you know, like stress by interpolating from the two lines for Kc equal to one and Kc equal to Kf. So here you all you already know that like sigma one by sigma three is basically 10 square 45 plus phi by two, right? If, if you don't have any cohesion there, okay? So we can use that equation. If you have cohesion, then basically you have to use the whole equation there and find out the Kf from there, okay? So the, for K, Kc equal to Kf, that's basically your, your drained or CD test envelope here. And Kc equal to one, that's basically this one here, okay? Kc equal to one and K, C equal to one, this is your intercept and this is your line here, okay? So this line is basically this line here, okay? And this is from your CD test. Now, this is from one to KF. So if your, let's say KF equal to three here. So this is KC equal to one to three. And if your field, Kc equal to two, then basically your line would be at the middle of this one, right? So we just interpolate that value directly from this two, you know, like Kc values. So this one is a little bit complicated, but if you just take, take a look in the uh, spreadsheet, then you'll understand that what actually we are doing, okay? So let's try to do that one for our particular case here that they gave you the CD values. So this is like Kc equal to Kf. And you can see from the CD test since C prime equal to zero. So Kf equal to sigma one by sigma three is 10 square 45 plus P prime by two, which is actually three here. So this is the line for, you know, like, our Kc equal to Kf equal to three. And this one is coming from our R values. So from the CU test, actually they already gave that value to you. If they don't give you that then value to you, 
you can just get that one from directly from here because you already know the you know like equation to find out your d and your psi from your phi r and phi prime okay so i just tried to see show you that from the c you test your dkc equal to one like the intercept here that has to be cr cosine phi r cosine phi prime divided by one minus sine phi r so if you solve that one then basically you get 1379 which is already given here so if not given you can just calculate that one similarly you have another equation to find out your psi angle here and you can find out this one here once you get this two then basically you can draw that line here so the intercept is 1.379 that's in psf i just put that one in ksf because we're just trying to like calculate everything uh, in terms of our um keep per square feet okay so that's the reason here so for your homework problem i didn't give you this one i just gave you this one so you have to calculate this d kc equal to one and psi kc equal to one values from there okay now this is basically your strength competition for second stage so we are just trying to calculate like uh, that what strength we are going to consider for second stage okay we are just calculating that one here because we want to consider the consolidation that occurred during the steady state seepage condition when the water was at high okay so you can see here that we can just find out the total normal force working at the bottom of the each slide which is this equation here okay that's coming actually from your uh simplified you know like uh, bishop's method directly from here this one is basically uh, m alpha okay once you get that normal force we can find out the normal stress from there which is n by del l minus u that's column three column two is your pore water pressure actually this one is i copied that line i should put that one like blue you know like the from the from uh the first calculation okay then the effective normal stress effective normal stress is basically this one here sigma c equal to n divided by del l minus u the shear force which is calculated from there and from there your shear stress is this then basically your kc at the field condition is sigma prime c plus tau c sine phi plus one divided by cosine phi divided by whole thing here so from there you can just try to find out your consolidation stress ratio or the consolidation primary stress ratio from that equation which represents the field condition okay once you get that one then basically you try to find out what would be your find out this one is for kc equal to one you just use that equation and find out these values and kc equal to kf you know also y equal to mx plus c use that equation there and you can just find out these values here and then basically the effective principal stress ratio at failure we already calculated that one this is three then we can just interpolate that strength you know like using this equation here okay 
So that's basically we are just trying to get the undrained shear strength of the soil at the, at the bottom of different you know, like slices here. Once you get that strength, then basically we go to the um, second stage calculation, okay? So these are the step-by-step -step procedure for each of the column actually. I wrote that one directly here, but you can also see, <clears throat> I wrote that one here, like if you need any um, explanation that what does it mean? You can also take a look in the uh, manual to understand that what does it mean here. So this is basically your second stage computation. So you can see this is the same thing here, only like difference is like now this is undrained condition. So basically undrained condition means like a fee equal to zero and this is the total stress analysis. So it doesn't matter how much is your pore water pressure, okay? So you see here that at second stage, basically your water table fall from here to here, okay? So you can see there is no load in any one of that, you know, like slices here. So basically your surface load is zero for all of them, okay? So surface load is zero. So basically your moment is also zero. Now, for your particular problem like homework problem, you say that all of them are not zero. Some of them has uh, surface load, uh, at least one or two, you know, like that depends on how you slice them. Now it has like uh, actually surface load there. And then you can see here that actually your piezometric value doesn't require here because this is a total stress analysis. So your pore stress is also zero here. And this is your cohesion that I calculated in the previous one. I just copied that one here, okay? And this is your friction angle. Now it's zero because it's a phi equal to zero, you know, like type of solution. So once you set that one, then you just calculated this component, your M alpha and this one. And once you try to find out the calculated factor of safety 1.4, and then, you know, like a couple of or three, four times, if you just, you know, um, go for iteration, and then you just come like uh, your assume factor of safety is equal to your calculated factor of safety, which is actually 1.4. So you understand that one, that at the first stage that was like 2.27, Let's go there. Um, so you can see that was 2.27. And now this one is only uh, only 1.54. So uh, now we need to move forward and try to see that actually, you know, like these are the step by step procedure for second stage computation. But let's say if we go there, uh, then this is important that the drain shear strength calculated from the second stage are compared with the undrained shear strength okay, used in the second stage computation, okay? So what happens actually, let me explain that one to you, that some of the, you know, like slices where your um, normal stress is very low in that like here, here, and here, you can see at the bottom of that, 
you know, slices one and two are like 12, one, two, three, and 12. You can see the water can drain very easily at that corner here, okay? At that corner here, because it's a very small area. So if, even though like all these bigger, you know, like slices, the soil is still undrained, but at that corner, sometimes we see that the water will drain very fast, okay? So we'll try to see since the sigma or normal stress at this corner at the same time is very low. So we just have to take a look like whether your drain shear strength is lower than the undrained shear strength. If some of them, your drain shear strength is lower, then basically you have to go for a third stage competition. If you see now, uh, actually undrained shear strength is actually is the lowest for all slices, then you don't need like your third stage competition, okay? But you have to check that one. So in the third stage competition, the undrained strength is replaced with the drain shear strength for slices, so the drain shear strength is actually lower, okay? So we'll just compare that too. So actually you can see, we just tried to find out the normal force using the same equation here. Only thing here is like your force, P force is not working anymore, okay? Is zero in that stage, second stage. From there, you also have the piezometric height, which is basically now this piezometric height Okay, from the head to here, from here to here, from here to here. So that's your piezometric height. You can just find out your pore water pressure from there. Once you get that one, then basically effective normal stress, you can just calculate that one from the normal force divided by del L minus U. So that's basically your effective stress here. Okay, and this is your undrained, this is your drain strength, this is your undrained strength, okay? No, it's like effective normal stress. From that effective normal stress, we find out the drain shear strength, which is basically S drain is C prime sigma prime D tan phi. This one is actually e, this one here, this column here, okay? So this is your undrained shear strength that you got from the second stage calculation. And this is your shear strength uh, for drain case. Now you can, if you compare these two, you can see that drain shear strength is actually lower. So if this is lower than this one, then basically the drain shear strength will govern the situation, okay? So that's basically for one here. And you can see for one, actually, it's a very tiny cell and there is no water there. So it's very, you know, you can understand that, that the water will drain very quickly from there, okay? Now you can see here also that this one is smaller than this one. So again, the drain strain you know, like dominates here, it means like the government the situation. In all other cases, actually, you will see your undrained shear strength is lower than your drained shear strength. So we are gonna use the lowest strength here. Only the last one here, you can see this one is actually lower than this one. So we are gonna use this one here, okay? The lowest one. So once we know that only like this one, two, and this one, three, this one is drain shear strength, then we go for third stage calculation. So this is your pore water pressure here. That's we copied from here, here, okay? 
Now the cohesion is for direct shear test, you see this one is intercept zero and 30. So we put that one zero, zero, this is 30, 30. Here, zero, 30. And for undrained shear condition, this is your C and your phi equal to zero because this is the total stress analysis, phi equal to zero. Then we just try to find out like this part here, then MA and then this part here. And we try to see that what would be the calculated factor of safety. And then after several iteration, you can also find out your acid factor of safety. Uh, when the matches, you can see actually this one is 1.46, actually a little bit le less than, um, 1.54, that's what we got from the second analysis, right? So why this one is a little low? Because I changed some of the strength from undrain to drain because drain strength was lower at that time, right? So you can see since the strength is actually lower, so our factor of safety is a little bit lower here. So final factor of safety is 1.46. Okay, so I also put the step-by-step, -step, you know, like procedure for third stage competition, which is here. And then you can also see this is like from your uh, manual. This one is talking about like why we are using grain shear strength at the beginning and then why I'm grain shear strength phi equal to zero situation in the second stage. And then finally, we are trying to compare like which uh, strength is lower and we are trying to see the lower strength. Um, and that actually occurs only at the peripheral slices because the water can drain very fast there. At the same time, uh, sometimes what we saw, like, like let's say slice number one was uh, kind of above the, you know, like uh, water table. So all the time, this one will be drain shear strength, okay? So that's basically it. I just posted the um, Excel file. Uh, in your blackboard. So if you get chance, just take a look there. And then if you have any question, please feel free to join the uh, Zoom session so that I can explain you a little better, okay? Thank you so much for your attention.